So uh, can I uh, invite uh, Jacques Arnoux uh, to uh, go on the stage, please? So please welcome Jacques, uh, who is uh, my colleague at CNES. CNES is the French ISRO. And uh, Jacques is um, a very special person, actually, in our space agency, because uh, he is not uh, the regular type of engineer. He is an engineer as well, but he's not like every one of us. Uh, he has um, studied theology. He has studied history of science. He has mixed up a lot of things in his life and wrote a, a lot of books. And I think um, this is why we have him tonight, because he will deliver something, an, another vision of what we hear from and about space usually. And um, let me say, uh, and you know that we have our friend from ISRO who, is, uh, who will join. So um, let me, to give you a, 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 a shortcut to what will be discussed tonight, you know the difference between applied sciences and uh, <clears throat> fundamental science, right? So you have applied scientists who work uh, for uh, your everyday life, and you have the fundamental scientists who push the border of knowledge and uh, will discover things that are more in link with, uh, let's say, the future of humanity, maybe, and uh, for, for which the applications in your daily life will take longer to come, but they, they might come as well at some point. And in space, we can, I want to take this image because in space we have a similar thing. We have applied space, so space applications, which is what you use every day, like the GPS, like uh, meteorology on, um, when you get uh, the, 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 the information on, uh, on the weather forecast, uh, what you use uh, for telephony, for telecom, for uh, direct to home television and so on. That's the applied space, right? And we cannot emphasize too much how, how much that is very, very important. It's a, especially very important nowadays for climate research, for a lot of things that are from what our life is depending, right? So, so that's a very important part of space and it's, it's, it's essential. But we have also something that is close to fundamental research in space and that I would say is exploration. So space exploration is, you know, sending a, 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 some space uh, object to other planets outside of our galaxy, uh, making astronomy, looking at, uh, you know, uh, very far away uh, systems, uh, which means looking into the past and so on. And, and this is usually where we get attacked, uh, especially now that, uh, you know, money is uh, rare. Uh, while people will say, uh, is it really useful to do this, you know? Uh, what does it bring uh, directly to us? And here is where I want Jacques to uh, come up with his ideas because he worked a lot about exploration and about the meaning of exploration. So before we start maybe uh, talking about India specifically, but I know also that in, in India we had this similar discussion, especially uh, with, at the time, Vikram Sarabhai, who was very much involved in this kind of thinking. And uh, Jacques, please. First, bonsoir, and uh, thank you for this invitation and uh, occasion to, to meet you this evening and to stay a very short time in India, but it's always a, a great and incredible experience to spend time in, in this country. Um, directly to try to answer this uh, first question, I want to invite you to see uh, the, uh, the title of this exhibition, Science Beyond Borders. And when I, I read that, I say, oh, yes, but you can also say people behind science. And it was very interesting that on this, uh, on this picture uh, presenting the, uh, the exhibition is only people. Uh, you can see a little airplane and I don't know what in the O, but uh, first it's people. And discovering that it's people beyond science. Science is nothing. First, it's scientists 
and people. And who are these people? If you have time, there are before and after this, time, this, uh, uh, this uh, speech, you have to visit the exhibition and quite um, on each, not each, perhaps not each view, but one, on, on two view you have people from the past and from the present. And that's a, that's a, the reason is, is connecting with exploration. I remember I read, um, um, not all the book, but uh, a part of a book of, of Hermann Obert. Hermann Obert was one of the fathers of astronautics, a German scientist and engineer of the beginning of the 20s. And uh, people ask him, but why exploration? Your question, Mathieu. And Obert answer, I totally agree that for some people among us is no evidence. They don't have the spirit of exploration. So they, they cannot understand. But for other people, it's so evident that they don't, they don't have to answer also. It's evident exploration. Our uh, necessity to cross the border, to go beyond the borders, that's the reason scientists are explore. Even if they are staying in their laboratories, uh, beyond their, uh, in their office, their mind are always beyond the borders trying to explore the unknown. Because it's not so easy. Sometimes we prefer to stay in our, uh, inside our common borders. But some of us, for a long time, perhaps since the origin of humanity, some of us say, okay, I want to know what is beyond the borders, beyond the sea, beyond the mountain. And it's a very interesting Think, if you try to think why we are explorers, we are uh, some people among us. Are the animals explorers? I don't know what is your answer to that. My answer is that animals are curious. Curiosity is common with, is a common uh, capacity of, of life being. My cats are curious. Uh, my, my snake is curious. I have a snake. Not here. Don't care. Um, it means that, okay, they, they, they decide to know what is behind the doors, beyond their own borders. They are curious. We are curious. But we have something in our head that animals don't have is a capacity to imagination. Imagination is a capacity to not only to go behind the borders, but to think I am now behind the borders. If now you say, okay, I don't know why I'm now at this, this one table. I prefer to be in my home or with my friend or um, at the bar, you can do that. You close your eyes and you imagine yourself at the bar in your home or what you want. It's a, it's a human capacity. But if you combine curiosity and imagination, that's exploration. Because you say, okay, what is behind the door? Oh, I imagine that it's uh, the bar, the sea, or, okay. And I, I have to do, to, to cross the border and, and after to, to discover, to explore this unknown territory, that exploration. And exploration belongs to the scientific domain or a lot of domain. And when you mention the fact that engineers are explorers, they need to go to, to push the frontier, to push the borders. Uh, I, I, but also I, the artists, the poets, or, or, or even in your country, we can tell about that. Spirituality is also exploration. Sorry, but I'm... No, no, but that, 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 that's the point. Actually, um, I started my, uh, my um, way in uh, the space agency at the Astronaut Directorate. And um, I saw a lot of the astronauts uh, leaving uh, for their mission who were uh, military pilots at the time. 
and uh, they went up uh, with this very uh, straight military mind, and I uh, saw them coming down, and they came down with a spiritual view, and they had these speeches that uh, you would never uh, uh, dare to put in the mouth of, uh, of a colonel or of, of a military officer. And, um, and so uh, I saw them change uh, between the, 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 the day they went and the day they came back. Uh, I think maybe a word on that. How does uh, the, the, how can space, why or why does space change humans like that? And what does it bring? Why are people fascinated by astronauts? I mean, uh, let's be honest, we could have uh, the same work done by uh, robots uh, easily. It's what astronauts do, robots could do it. So what is behind all that stuff? It's a lot of questions in your uh, unique question. Um, first, is the, the, in the history of science, um, the fact that during a long time, by imagination, we ask the question if it was possible to travel in space. And with some differences between uh, cultures, in fact, you know, as me, that uh, our ancestor, um, see in the sky, in the cosmos, celestial beings, gods, angels. It was another domain, and in many cultures, this domain was forbidden for humankind. We belong to Earth. We are mortal. We are not totally perfect. We have no, uh, we, we, we cannot live in sky. We cannot live in this paradise. You can use the word you want to, dis to, to name this domain of, of sky, space, cosmos. Probably you know that in Greek, cosmos uh, is a way to, to define something perfect, perfectly beautiful. And this beauty is not for human. I mean in our human condition. If you are engaged in a spiritual way, perhaps step by step, after a long time, you can probably be introduced, probably after your death, in this paradise. But it's, it's a long way. I, I so, feel like I have invited Dr. Strange. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but what arrived at the 17th century, it was the, the first scientific revolution in the Occident. And thanks to the astronomer, they discovered that it's not a cosmos. It's not, the, the world is not uh, divided in the, the bad part, Earth, and the beautiful part, cosmos. It's a universe. Universe mean, mean unique. And it was a capacity to travel in space. And uh, first by imagination. But now we can welcome the second person of this round table. So ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Uma Maheshwaram. <clears throat> Please. <clears throat> so uh, we were in the middle of discussing uh, the impression that uh, going to space will provide to astronauts and why, you know, it is uh, you change when you are in space. You go, you, you, you go to space in a certain state of mind and you come back from space in another state of mind. Um, and uh, the question was, why do we send astronauts to space? And I think it's very uh, critical uh, question for India now with the Gaganyan program and uh, you are the director of, of the directorate in ISRO which uh, conducts Gaganyan. So maybe to start off with, uh, sir, can you give us an update of, uh, of the program? Where are we with Gaganyan? When will we fly? Uh, what uh, do the uh, selected astronauts do these days? And uh, is everything well? Thank you, uh, Mr. Matthew. First of all, let me apologize for the delay. I went somewhere else. And you know in Bangalore, uh, commute, how difficult it is to commute. And I think I started from that place at 6.15, so one hour. <laughs> so 
So that's a scenario. And uh, in a, I would say, in a lighter vein, uh, our only astronaut, uh, Rakesh Sharma, who used to live in Bangalore earlier, uh, somebody asked him, you have achieved so much, you have gone to space, you are a fighter pilot, and what more you wish to do? Then he said, one day I would like to drive a Formula One car in Bangalore city. <laughs> okay. So thank you for the question. Uh, as you know, the Gaganyan program, a uh, very ambitious program was announced by for Honorable Prime Minister on 2018 Independence Day. And uh, a very ambitious, a very tough uh, target was set to us in the sense that uh, by 2022, this year, before uh, the end of this year, we should send a man or a woman at least to space and bring them back safely. So this was a mandate. And uh, we are working very hard for that. But as you know, there, are, there were certain setbacks specifically due to COVID. And uh, because of COVID, uh, I would say practically one and a half years to two years uh, setback has, been, has happened. Practically because of this peculiar geo, geo situations in India wherein the industries are also, uh, the industries also were uh, uh, finding it very hard to carry out their activities during the last two years. And as you know, the entire ISRO program, uh, more than 80% we depend on industries only. So that was another problem. But at the same time, let me tell you that all the, there are no technical issues as such now. The launch vehicle is uh, practically ready. It's a human-rated launch vehicle, we call it. It's the GSLV Mark III. The, uh, the, the basically, the unit or the crew module, which takes the astronauts to the space and bring them back, their design also is ready. Fabrication is in progress. Uh, the astronauts are already selected. And uh, they have undergone uh, very detailed uh, level of training in uh, Russia as a, to, to, to start with. And now they are undergoing their uh, Indian part of the training, which is very specific to our own launch vehicle and our own crew module. That training is on. They are undergoing that. And uh, there is a very, there are certain new, unique things which we have not done earlier. As far as launch vehicle is concerned, we are quite adept. As far as the spacecraft is concerned, we are quite, quite adept. But as far as the technology is concerned, there are some new areas which are, uh, I would say, fresh to us. Like, for example, the environmental control system in the crew cabin. So uh, this, uh, we have decided that we will do it on our own to start with. And that activity is going on quite well. At the same time, as I said, this is not an ISRO program. This is a pan-India program. Uh, and I would say not only Pan-India program, it is where the other countries are also involved. Uh, that, so that makes it very special, actually, because uh, I, 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 um, I've been following it since the beginning. And uh, I can say it goes way uh, above uh, the space sector. I mean, everybody is talking about it. Everybody is concerned. Yeah. And uh, even uh, in our country, I mean, Kness is uh, even more because we are involved and participating. But uh, it is something that uh, where the world is watching towards, uh, towards yeah, India. Yeah. But it is also something where um, there is more than, it is more than search, uh, only launching a spacecraft. So this is this human part. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on this. I know that, for example, when, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, it's, it's almost 10 years that I am here, so I, I used to say we, but it's, uh, it's India. But <laughs> when we launch a, a, a satellite, uh, you know that um, there are, um, uh, the chairman goes to the temple, and there are there, there are ceremonies, and, and 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 it's very linked, you know, like like the the the, the spirituality the is very linked to. Can you say a word about 
Will it be something like that? You, you know the Russians, I was in Russia for several years. The Russians have, have a lot of uh, ceremonials before they fly, you know, for the, the, the cosmonauts, they, they have to do this and that. And, then, uh, to, uh, and, and wait, wait, are you building up something like that, something that is more than technology, something that, that goes back to the very core of humans, you know? Or, or you, do, will, will you have something like that in India? I can't imagine that India, will not have something like that. You, uh, see, uh, whatever we do, whatever we Indians do, there will be a kind of uh, spiritual or a cultural tag to it, always. As you rightly said, with all these technologies, before a, a launch uh, commences, definitely they're going to the temple or a church or whatever it is, a, a religious practice, pray for the success, this is a part of our life. I don't deny that. It is there. And, uh, and very, I would say many of the uh, requirements or many of the actions are based on the individual's uh, taste also. So, for example, chairman will have a preference. The director will have another preference. So, so but there are no conflicts there. Each one is allowed to do whatever he wants. And that will be done also. And... Uh, the so-called, uh, the, the Indian uh, way of doing things now, many people called it as Jugat. So, <laughs> so ma many of these aspects, you know, you cannot explain, but we have a way of doing things which are not generally done elsewhere. And, and generally it clicks also. So that kind of approaches are always there. It is always part of our life. It is part of our, and uh, as you all know, uh, ISRO, we, we, we are extremely proud, let me tell you that we are extremely proud to tell that we are in a, uh, we have something called ISRO culture. And uh, what is ISRO culture in the sense, I should say that it is entire, act, it, you know ISRO is a government organization. It is a central government organization. We are under the Prime Minister directly. But, Notwithstanding the constraints that you have with respect to uh, running in a central government organization, a government organization, ISRO is run, I would say, by passion. ISRO is run by commitment. And these are two major things which drives the entire population of ISRO. We, the lowermost category, or we, the highest, highest most category, whatever you call it, like the, maybe the chairman or the secretary. So this passion, this commitment is absolutely uh, part of our blood, I would say. And I am very, uh, uh, we are very fortunate to have a series of leadership, starting from the great Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, who have continued to inculcate this kind of a culture or this kind of a uh, fabric into our, uh, you, whatever you, you do. You started in the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, right, in, um, in, in Trivandrum. Yes. And um, actually, um, what we, how we see it from France is that it, it, the, the, the story between France and India in space, for example, has been a story between two persons. And uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot understand it if you look at only the technology. Absolutely. And, and, and it was two persons, so Professor Jacques Blamont. And Jacques uh, Blamont and Dr. Vikram Sabai. And Dr. Vikram Sabai. <laughs> so uh, Jacques uh, was a, a close friend. I think friend, he was a close friend say. of yours, I suppose. Yeah, I <laughs> and uh, of, of Jacques Blamont. Maybe you can say a word on how Jacques Blamont saw India and how he, he always uh, came up with, um, he, he brought the in, that Indian spirit that uh, Uma just uh, described. That he, Jacques Blamont actually imported it into the French system in a way. Yes, I, I was lucky to, to meet Jacques Blamont at my first visit to CNES in Paris a long time ago. And, uh, and after that, even if I, I never uh, concretely cooperated with, with him, uh, we, we engaged a sort of dialogue uh, uh, from time to time during uh, 20 years. And um, I, if I 
I know <laughs> two years ago that I have this meeting <laughs> this night. I probably asked him very precise question concerning this chapter of cooperation be between France and India. I only read what, what he write concerning that in this very nice chapter in, in his biography concerning uh, this uh, relation with uh, um, Sarabai. And, um, but um, first, uh, as a little introduction, when he received this distinction from India four or five years ago, I don't remember, uh, I, I have, don't remember the name, but he was a very idle, and uh, he was very, very proud of that. And was probably the, uh, he, he, he speak of everybody that. And, but he was not a sort of uh, um, superficial or artificial. It was, uh, I understand that he was a, a sort of human proof of his own engagement, of his relation with Sarabai, and a, a sort of consecration of so many years uh, in your country, in France, uh, country, between our countries. And he was very, uh, not only proud, he was very, uh, it was a, a real pleasure for, to, to, to know that people recognize that. Um, and it's, Yes, it's important because he, this man was sometimes very strange and, and uh, not always easy to know what he was thinking. Um, another point was, um, as you know, in, in France, all, and, as you mentioned, not only the, uh, the astronaut with a uh, military formation uh, have a sort of uh, um, some, yeah, was very careful to share their own psychological or spiritual experience, but everybody, especially engineer and scientist community. And, uh, but I discovered very rapidly that Jacques, for Jacques Blamont, this dimension of spirituality with a very common term was, very, was really important for, for him. And um, uh, we, 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 int we have a collaboration on a very specific um, domain after he published a book in uh, 2000 four or five, uh, con the name was the introduction of a, a new century of, of, um, of, of a very dangerous century. And he was, in this book, very pessimist of, of the future. And I remember I, I said, Professor, you cannot write that. It's, it's too, too black. And, and, and think about the, the, the next generation. Oh no, it's, it's a reality, okay. And after, he came, two years after, he came in my office and said, okay, we have to, to write something together to prepare the future. And this idea to prepare the future, to, to, to be the future, was in fact based on a spiritual opinion. And it's not only technique. It was how we can build a community, a, a spirit community in the humankind. Uh, and it was the idea, the idea of federation, cooperation. And for me, this idea is coming from all these, their own experience uh, in your country with Sarabai and all this. He was, not, he was not able to rise that probably at the beginning of his own career, but at the end of his life, after this human experience, uh, scientific experience, uh, diplomatic experience, and what, he, what he, he established between people, between community. This idea of federation to prepare the future. Great. Yes, I think it's um, also something that uh, we, we have in mind when, when thinking at Blamont is uh, that uh, he was uh, very much in favor of uh, Space for the development, and uh, actually that was uh, a direct was a dream of Sarabhai. So from Vikram Sarabhai, because uh, we need to recall that India uh, is uh, the only uh, space power that developed from the civilian uh, side, and that uh, started making space for the citizens from the very beginning. All the others, including France, started with missiles to show power and uh, uh, send uh, some uh, military stuff on other people's head. So uh, 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 India was from the beginning, and when I say India, it was only one guy. It was this person, Vikram Sabai, who had this vision, 
and who managed to push this vision through to the highest political level. Uh, maybe you can give a word on, on, on that. How, how could this work at that time when you, you, you would imagine uh, in the 60s? Uh, uh, how could he convince the Prime Minister of India that the most important thing in India in the 60s was to have a space agency? Yeah, absolutely true, because uh, I think uh, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai was a very unique person. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, many people used, used to say that he was born with a silver, uh, silver spoon or a golden spoon. Uh, he had a sprawling industry which was, uh, uh, which, which was, which bandwidth or spectrum itself was wide. Uh, mills and, uh, I, I, you can name it, so, to, so many varieties of activities he was party. So, uh, but this uh, kind of passion or this kind of vision for space was all, always with him. You know, his statement of we, we should be second to none in the committee of the world as far as the applications from space to be translated into the benefit of the society and the common man. This was his statement. So this was his vision. So uh, uh, interestingly, he had a, uh, his, uh, the, his demeanor or his kind of, uh, uh, kind of connections that he has. He and he was a man, he was a very charming person as I, I have not seen him. He was a very charming person I, I, and very charismatic person. So he could really drill into the minds of the people and luckily our first Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was also a person who was uh, very, uh, very committed to see that the social benefits reach to the common man through development. So when Sarabhai told that many of uh, ISRO, uh, India's uh, requirements can be harnessed through the technology and the, uh, and the benefits that you get from the technology from space, I think Jawaharlal Nehru simply lapped it up. And, uh, and uh, he, he, could, he, he could really uh, uh, get things done the way he wanted. And uh, the, the way he started the things was uh, beautiful actually. He, he, not only uh, uh, within India, he, he, the people who left India uh, were experts in many of the fields which are required, he brought them back. And uh, that's how the initial activities in the southernmost part of India, Tumba, it started in a church building. And that also is highly symbolic, you know. Uh, we, he could convince the uh, bishop of Trivandrum at that time to say that this research uh, is extremely important for the country. And the bishop convinced the fisher folk who were staying in and around that area to move away. Of course, we gave the land and uh, we, uh, we gave the land and other things to them to stay for in some other place. But they were willingly moving away and the church building itself was given to us and uh, the entire Indian space program started in a church building. And that church building is still there. It is one of the wonderful museums. If you get a chance to go to Trivandrum, please visit that museum. It's a wonderful museum. Uh, and uh, that's why this is a, the, it, it is an epitome or it's an exa best example of communal harmony also, I would say. The Indian space program epitomizes the communal harmony, uh, harmony aspects also. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting and uh, it goes back to so many uh, uh, personal things, I mean, uh, which, are, which are linked uh, to, to maybe moments of chance also. If some, you know, some contacts would not have happened between, between some persons, maybe some things would not have, would not be there today. And that's, that, that, that's enormous. Uh, uh, I, I, just to add, uh, since we are on the subject of Jacques Blamo, both uh, Blamo and Sarabhai met in a COSPAR meeting, one of the first COSPAR meetings in Washington. And subsequently, both were enamored with, with each other, the ideas, the, how the social benefits can be translated, etc., etc. And the first launch of sounding rocket, that was in 1963 from Tumba, it was with a Nike Apache rocket of, from US. But the first payload was provided by Bejak Blamo. It was a sodium vapor uh, uh, payload. It was provided by Blomo, which was developed in his lab. And also subsequently two more launches, the payload was given and the launch vehicle, uh, the rocket was also given. It was your uh, 
center uh, uh, yeah we had it. we we had a, a long story of yeah. uh, center launches in tumba yeah. and uh, at the the, the the it finished uh, in the, i had a discussion a discussion with jacques blamont one day where when um, he was visiting india and uh, i said but how uh, did the military at the time give approval for you to send rockets to india you know and uh, he said you know they were wooden boxes so i said what he said yeah 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 they they were in pieces in wooden boxes so i just sent them and i said uh, but how could you you send them and what did the ministry of uh, defense uh, say and he was smiling and he, he looked at me he said i didn't ask <laughs> and um, if you you know if you imagine that was 1960s uh, i don't know if uh, we could still do something like that or if someone would do something like that, he might not be in this position not anymore. Not not that, but um, there is a lot of anecdotes, a lot of uh, things. Well, what I want to say is that the, 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 these are small steps, you know, that someone at some moment takes a risk, some, someone at some moment meets someone. And if, if all of these things would not have come together, it, we would not be here. And um, yeah, something also to talk about the future, not only about the past. I, um, I think uh, India and France have, and we have read it, all read it in, in the news uh, these last weeks, have, uh, are coming closer and closer uh, due to the geopolitical aspects now and the recomposition of the world and um, but in space also I mean the this uh, this uh, draft that we have uh, between India and France is reinforcing actually it's go it's getting even stronger and why is it getting stronger because you can of course do a lot of things with the Americans you know you can fly uh, and do par international partnerships with NASA Knesters, Isroders but um, you cannot, you should not do everything with the Americans. I mean, you should uh, share your, uh, you know, in, in, Fr in French we say you should not put all your eggs in the same basket. And, um, and here, um, India is an exceptional uh, partner for France because uh, you can, with India, we do joint satellites, we do launch vehicle technology, we do exploration, and we will do manned space, I hope so, because Europe now, the European Space Agency is thinking about European manned space. So maybe, Dr. Uma Maheshwaram, can you give us a, a little bit of insight about what will come after Gaganyan and where we will have maybe a chance to cooperate? So we know about maybe an Indian space station, a lot of fantastic programs that, that will come up. We want to hear a little bit about that. Absolutely, as you rightly told, our uh, relationship is, is absolutely pretty strong. And uh, as far as the Indian space program is concerned, already we are into a very good collaboration, uh, either with ESA or with Kenneth. Uh, you know, uh, already uh, uh, I would say we have a very good uh, implementing arrangement which is going on now, uh, just now which is going on. That's why it's, it's a current thing which is going on wherein so the, uh, our flight surgeons identified are in, in, in Toulouse now and, the, and they are getting untrained with respect because your uh, European astronaut is also there now. So, uh, and uh, there is an exchange program of scientists and there is also a, a team of Indians are now going, uh, from ISRO people are going with respect to the training, with respect to the ground related, ground equipment related. Uh, so that is already on. And we have also um, in, in an implementing arrangement with respect to some of the products which is human-centric, which is absolutely required like your, uh, uh, the, the wet pads and uh, th there are a host of items. Equi equipments uh, for equipments the astronauts. for the astronauts, which already, there are two phases. Phase one, you have already completed. I would say Kenneth has already completed and we are in the discussion stage with respect to phase two. So, like that, uh, now we are discussing with respect to environmental control system uh, implementation in an integrated form as a plan B, whether that can be implemented through some of the industries in uh, Europe that also we are in the plan. So, this is the current uh, scenario as far as the uh, human space flight is concerned. But in future, this, this is only a beginning, I would say, as far as this is concerned. As you rightly told, we are going to have uh, stronger launch vehicles Yes, we will have a 
human uh, kind of uh, habitat scenario we are we are going to make a uh, space station former chairman has already announced at that time that we are into a space but we are on in the very preliminary stage you now because our entire concentration is to see that this gaganyan program is uh, uh, getting at the earliest as uh, as soon as possible i would say so but the, you so you guys deliver in 18 months you know you we need 10 years so you, you need to tell us early <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, yeah because the way we we approach the program uh, uh, is a little bit unique in the sense we, we are very cost, cost conscious. At the same time, we should not make any compromise with respect to quality and reliability. So this is a tough compromise which we need to do, but we, we so far we have been doing the tightrope walk and we are succeeding in that, uh, thanks to God. But uh, the important thing is, as far as Gaganyani program is concerned, it is still a step uh, more, I would say, because now the ball, it's a different ball game altogether. Now humans are going to be there, and that totally changes the scenario as far as the approach to the program is concerned. So we are very keen that all the qualification tests and the and the uh, and the reliability requirements with respect to the test. For example, the crew escape system. It is a very very complex. Uh, so, so we need to establish that we will do it correctly. So a series of tests are planned. The parachutes, when they are coming back, the parachutes are deployed at the right time, at the right place, a series of parachutes. So, so a series of tests we are planning. And after the completion, successful completion of the, these qualification tests only, we are contemplating now with respect to the first unmanned mission. And definitely we are going to have two unmanned missions, which will be absolutely identical to the manned mission. And after that only, we will be planning for the manned mission. So this is the scenario. So a lot of activities are there, but all this will happen. I, I'm, 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 I'm very confident that within a couple of years, definitely. So and uh, uh, we as and when we are going to the next step after Gaganyi and what, as you said, like you know the technology developments for uh, uh, the the kind of uh, space station that we need to do. From space station, are we going to moon or are we going to Mars? So, uh, like that, uh, uh, these uh, uh, discussions are on the drawing board because we have to start now. Then only once Gaganians, otherwise there will be a big gap again. So, we need to start now. We have already started and definitely, uh, I, I am sure without your collaboration, we may not be able to go ahead also. So, it will be there. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, just a point of logistics, I know that you need to drive to Sri Harikota tonight, so you have six, you, you have six hours drive, so uh, please feel free to, to excuse yourself. Uh. I really thank you, <laughs> because I wanted to be here, that's why I, I said, uh, well, even if it is one hour delayed, I will come. I had promised you, so I must be here. I, so. I, I know, thank you very much for this. And, uh, Thank you, Mr. Uma Maheshwaram. I think that uh, we have a lot to do uh, together uh, between France and India, and uh, you are central to this cooperation. So thank you for having done it, and uh, I wish you a safe trip to the launch site. Thank uh, you. All the best. Thank you so much. <coughs> thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Good night. So um, this, it, 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 it's very interesting every time we have uh, someone from ISRO on stage to see how uh, the passion uh, comes uh, with the man or the woman. And um, this is a, uh, you forgot, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it, 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 it is something that is uh, one of the characteristics, I think, of, of space in general. Uh, so people who are in the space field are, are usually passionate. Uh, uh, but I think people who are in the space field in India are more passionate than others. Uh, so um, Jacques, uh, maybe something you have worked on, and I, I personally, I'm very curious. So I will ask this question and then give the floor to the to the public but um, uh, you know the, the, the 
there was a, 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 a clip in the news recently uh, again on uh, we want uh, to actively uh, communicate with uh, extraterrestrial life. So uh, are we doing right in trying to bring up uh, some information or to send out some information about us and take the risk that others somewhere in other in in the universe uh, will find it and what will they do with it and if they understand it will they be happy to know that we are here or will they be unhappy and what will happen to us and I, I mean this is a very philosophical question it's very funny when we think about it like that but actually when you when you think 10 seconds more you will realize that it's not so funny at all. And um, so how can one as a human uh, decide whether uh, you should say, hello, I'm here, or whether sh you should uh, just uh, refrain from doing it and uh, leave it to them to discover us if they are there? Okay, it's a big question, and perhaps you can organize the next conference uh, about only this question with people from, from this country, because it's, I'm sure that the, in the Indian cultures, it's a lot of things concerning this question of uh, the, the, the possible existence of other beings in another place. Because I know that in my Occidental culture, this question of uh, extraterrestrial life or before we are saying about the priority of world is a very an antique question, probably one of the first philosophic questions. It means that we have proof uh, concerning this subject um, for more than 2,500 years. The first Greek philosopher asked themselves, what is it possible to have another world? And it was a big debate between the uh, Greek philosopher concerning this topic. Uh, it's the first point to know before entering this question. After that, don't forget that during, uh, also the, the same time or more, uh, people, when I mentioned before, the, the statue of sky was in contact, in conversation with sky. Say, so we are praying, we are asking help from the sky. Remember in French, help toi le ciel t'aidera. Okay, but this means that you are in conversation with sky. You, you, so if now, uh, with other words, in other contexts, we have the idea to, to make contact with extraterrestrial life, it seems to be, to be lo logic. It's a sort of historical logic. Uh, in French language, until the end of the 19th century, the term of extraterrestrial was used as the same as a sur, surnatural. Surnatural extraterrestrial was the same. It means what is not on Earth, okay, or what is outside our natural condition. So for me, it's logic that some people say, okay, we have to try, we have to to try to enter in relation, to establish a conversation with the extraterrestrial intelligence. Some people are afraid, okay. But you know, uh, with the invention of the radio, we are sending in space so many information since quite one century. So we are not anonymous in space. The so question is, is somebody, is somewhere someone we can collect this information? That's the question. What is interesting with that, um, behind this debate of, uh, okay, are, are we ready to send or not message? Okay, but we have done, it's, it's done, okay. Is, uh, for me, the, the, the relation between the, um, the search of extraterrestrial life or intelligence and the question of origins. In fact, it's the same with exploration, uh, your first question. For me, exploration, you may remember, I say, okay, curiosity, imagination. A third element of exploration, and especially with extraterrestrial life, is the question of origin. Uh, in the story of exploration, you have a lot of examples of research of the origin, origin of 
human origin of rivers, origin. Of, it's in fact we are going forward to, to know more of the past, of our beginning, our origins. And that's the reason it's a so fascinating question. I think that when people are fascinated by ET or by UFO, it's not, it's not stupid. Uh, it's very serious question. Uh, and the question is, who goes there? Uh, is there people behind our borders or were well, the same, the same subject? And in fact, it's also but who I am. Uh, it's a question of, again, a very classic, classical philosophical question or invitation. Know, you, know yourself. Uh, what is my, my own knowledge about myself? And it's a sort of mirror question with uh, the other. And it, it's, it's very, for me, it's quite common in every exploration and especially in space exploration. Yes, that's ma that makes our, our job uh, indeed uh, a little bit special. Uh, and uh, every day we, we have a, a mix of very pragmatic technical questions and very uh, high philosophical ones. And uh, I, I admit that uh, it's, uh, it's quite uh, fascinating even after, uh, after, after years and years of, of space activity. So um, um, please, uh, you in the in the public, uh, um, I was awaiting um, a couple of questions uh, from you to, to 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 continue the the debate. Someone, Susmita. Okay, it's uh, it's not very often that you get to talk to someone who is an ethics advisor to a space agency. So since we are experiencing a conflict in our contemporary times, I thought I'd ask you a question on war and peace and space involved in it. So if you remember the Nixon administration, Nixon was the president of the United States when the six moon landings happened. In 1969 in July, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon, they left a plaque saying, we come in peace for all mankind. I mean, wonderful, right? But same year, in March of 1969, Nixon and Kissinger started what was a covert US Strategic Air Command tactical bombing in eastern Cambodia, which went on for a year until May of next year. So how ironic it is that the same Nixon administration sent a plaque saying we come in peace on our behalf, on all our behalf. And at the same time, this kind of bombing was happening in Cambodia. So I think from an ethics point of view, I think we homo sapiens fare very badly, I think. I mean, I, I, so what is your view on how can we as a species in the same breath bomb the hell out of a country and go and claim ourselves to have arrived with peaceful intentions. Thank you for your very interesting question. Um, I, I remember a very nice um, idea from um, um, a French philosopher and Jesuit, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, uh, when he was um, living in, in Beijing during the Second World War, and, uh, and he, he had a, a real experience of a war during the First World War in France, and he was during the second one, he was in Beijing, uh, quite uh, imprisoned by, by the uh, Japanese troops. And he, he wrote a letter to French correspondent, and he, he speak about peace. And he said, Peace is not the contrary of war. Peace is a sort of trans transhuman uh, situation. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's over the sort of um, war 
against something and other. It's not war versus peace. It's some, we have to, to, to cross uh, war situation, to cross more peaceful situation, to know what is peace, what we can have in the direction or in mind what is peace. And I totally agree with you. It's sort of incredible uh, um, hypo hypocrite uh, situation to what you, meant, you remembered in, in, 60, in 69 and uh, the same American administration, but we can do the same as French administration or perhaps Indian administration. It's, we, it's not against the American position this time. But, um, but what I, I learned during my part of my life with the space community and, and yes, with people as Blamont and other people, and reading books and, and sharing testimonies, that and even this cooperation be, between our countries, that space is could be an invitation to peace. It's not immediately. It's not why if we are in space, we are not in peace. In fact, but uh, the fact that space invite or obliged some people to meet together, to cooperate, to do something, to, to, to succeed as, as a cooperation between Blamont and, and Sarabai. Uh, it's a way to build peace, to, to, to go forward and it's transhumanism. It's, it's, uh, we have to cross a lot of borders, perhaps to, not to reach, but to go in the direction of peace. We, we can perhaps read this uh, sentence of the American astronaut on the moon, uh, for me, is, it's a more realistic interpretation that to say, okay, we are peaceful men, no. But perhaps we have to admit after 60, 70 years of space enterprise that we have built something in this direction of more peaceful uh, Earth and more peacefully, uh, peaceful relation among countries, among people. But it's, it's never finished. It, it could always uh, fail. And, and we, we have this situation today. A uh, few days after the beginning of the war in Ukraine, the uh, Russian teams left Guyana. Uh, the, uh, the arrival of uh, Russian teams in Guyana was a sort of success. Wow, incredible. Launching Soyuz in Guyana. You, when you know the, the space story. And 15 years after, they left. So it's, yes, it's a sad situation. So we have to, it's, again, to go forward in cooperation. It's, it's a, sorry, it's an invitation. I, I read this message on the moon as an invitation. And uh, I think it's also a sign that institutional space is sustainable and needs to stay because commercial space we see developing now is obviously has obviously not this state of mind that you are describing and that is something that should uh, be sort of more maybe more more in depth uh, uh, yes sorry but <laughs> uh, um, uh, i have this aspect in mind when when we, we think of, we, we we are speaking about the future um, especially with this chapter of new space because it's New actors, new profit, new defense of profit, all this. Okay, we have not to say it's bad things. It's, it's a reality. But to introduce, uh, to, to establish a, a new governance of this new situation, we need all this story of cooperation, is, for example, between our countries. It's a base of, of, to, to build this governance for the future. We cannot, again, we can ignore this, uh, the emergence of new actors, but we have to, to be act very active actors today with this heritage. Hi, thank you very much. That was a very insightful talk. Um, I have two questions. The first question is, um, you know, as we exist now in this physical dimension on Earth, and soon we have, you know, virtual reality, especially with the metaverse, we get a chance, uh, you know, to have a virtual existence, you know, 
uh, with virtual avatars and all of that, which we are very happy about. And then there's an interesting now with space exploration, especially with space tourism, going to become a reality. We'll have a more physical uh, dimension, but in an alternate verse. So then there'll be like the universe, the metaverse, and a space verse. So I'm very curious to know, especially as a, as a space uh, scientist, your views on just our existence, you know, our physical embodied existence and our virtual existence. That's one. And if I may, a second question, just to build on what uh, the lady said. It is, in fact, uh, you know, part of our human existence that we always have to show a one-upmanship over the other. And I guess that's really what war is all about, right? And it often plays out. Uh, how can space as a dimension, uh, you know, either through pulling some new information, you know, some new images about you know, climate change or the water body shrinking, or how can it give us, or even discovering aliens, even if it's hypothetical, but how can it give us all like a new enemy to fight? So then we as countries can still give everyone a chance to show one upmanship. It could be like a new kind of Olympics almost, like a space Olympics, because you know, that might be a better uh, situation than war maybe. So I'd just like to know your views on that as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Concerning the first question, it, it's, I totally agree with, with you when you say it's, we, we are in a very um, evolutionary situation, especially the, the relation between um, real and virtual uh, experience. And um, um, if I only... You, you, um, use the direction of space exploration you mentioned. Sure that in the history of exploration, again, sorry, but it's, it's probably one of the main subjects, exploration. Um, you know that during the main time of, of human history, uh, it was always a physical, real uh, experience. Explorers are leaving the country during sometimes a long time and Coming, perhaps coming back, tell their story and say, okay, we, 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 we reach these frontiers and now the next I have to cross this frontier and go forward, forward and beyond, beyond, beyond the borders. Okay. And the, uh, with the telescope, it was something changing. Okay, we, we can see very far and perhaps a sort of distance experience but you know that during a long time, the question was, but what is the reality we are watching? Is it real, what we, we, we see with the telescope? It was a, a, a huge question for, in science at this time. But changing, the, the, the evolution is real with the, 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 the beginning of the, the, the space enterprise. We are sending out probes on, on different uh, on Mars, on the Moon, and and these probes are now very, very intelligent, artificial intelligent. They send us image for a long time. Remember Viking on Mars, or, or from the other planets. They send sounds. You can hear the sounds of, on Mars now, or I remember the uh, the descent of Wiggins uh, in 50 years ago. Uh, on, on the Titan, and we, we oh, the sound of the descent, incredible. Uh, it's it's real at the distance, but um, and now we can we can also uh, combine the the the, uh, the sense of the comet, you, you, uh, because we can analyze the uh, aura of the comets. So we we uh, mission after mission, we have more. Exp Experience of, of but co concrete experience is not as, not only the distance is not virtual. It's, it's something new. We have new a new way to explore. It's another way of space tourism, maybe in the future. Uh, so and now arrives the space tourism. We we and uh, okay, it's it's a concrete experience. And yeah, I, but it I, costs uh, thirty million dollars. So yes, uh, what you just described would be a space tourism for everyone. If we, could, if we could manage fact, to make... The, the, 
yes, Mathieu, you are right. Uh, first, you have to, today, to integrate the new way to explore, not only for physical explorer as, as before, but for everybody. And we, we need the, the explanation of scientists, uh, not too difficult explanation, but uh, they have to tell us the story of this new way to explore planet and Mars and asteroid and moon, and it's totally new. And, and so this is to discover this way to explore uh, with distance, but with concrete experience, with um, more and more concrete physical experience. But at, uh, arrive now space tourism. It's a sort of um, a disruption of, of that because people say, okay, but uh, if I want to experiment that, not only by using all this uh, um, virtual reality and, uh, okay, uh, intel but by my own uh, corporal, it, it's, it's a real temptation. Uh, and I, it, it, I can understand that people who have money to do that want to do that. I have recently a, a, a concrete debate with um, a people in charge of, of one of the uh, space museums in, in France, in Toulouse, Cité de l'Espace, and he explained, you know, we have now a new attraction. You, you can go in space, and it's a sort of a, a, a physical experience of, of space travel. Okay, very nice. And just after he said to me, you know, space tourism is a very, very bad thing, pollution. I'm sorry, it's a contra contradiction. Now you're against space tourism, and you are promoting uh, a virtual experience. Yes, because it's better to have virtual experience than concrete experience with pollution. But you know that if you offer people a virtual experience of space travel, they want to go really in space, because it's not the same to have virtual experience with all of sensor, or what we want to, to hear, to watch, to smell the, the, the space vessel, and to go really in space. So it's, we are at this time of evolution due to the uh, evolution of technique, evolution of space science. But the metaverse is all about being not the same. So actually, uh, in her question, maybe there was something like, uh, space might be a part of that. Like the new generation is building a new world, a new virtual world, and are we in that? Will we be in that? Will space be inside this virtual world in the future? The question is open. I, I just came back from a conference concerning artificial intelligence yeah. and uh, with a lot of ethical questions. Probably in relation with that. It's not only concerning space tourism, or, but in fact, all these questions are linked and it's Again, what I just mentioned before, it's always an invitation to know more about your, our, ourselves. And you, we are arriving at some limits of our human being due to the technique. And the question is, okay, uh, what, what I know about myself, what is my desire, what is my goal in life, uh, what is life, at least? Uh, what is the curiosity, and it's, I agree, it's a philosophical question, mm -hmm. and we discover now that we, we don't have the, the final solution. It's normal, because we have not the, solu the, the, the final definition of human life. Human life is always, the definition is always evolving due to our personal common experience, due to uh, the artifact you or, are providing. Aren't we giving to philosophers technical tools they didn't have in the past? Isn't space a toolbox for philosophy, actually? Sure. Remember, what, when you mentioned the, the, uh, the, exp the, the moment of the first landing on the moon, and uh, everybody know, if, 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 even if you are young now, but... Uh, the, um, the fascination for the, the, the picture of the Earth coming from the Apollo mission. And uh, it, it, it was, and it's always an experience who, which was quite, um, I could say that, uh, unprevisible. Only a few people say, 
the day we arrive in space probably is changing concerning our view on Earth. Or perhaps, but it was a fact. And that's a real, a concrete consequence. Even if this picture don't um, provoke the emergence of the, of the, uh, the care for the Earth and the uh, ecology and uh, env environment uh, interest, but it was the same moment and this image of the Earth um, were associated to this movement and, and, and push this movement of, of, and it was necessary. And it, but it's it was, something new and, and philosopher are, I've worked on that and I have to work today. Her, her second question was something like make space, not war, or yes, something like that. The second <laughs> question is, yes, um, the two questions is, is, is linked with your question. Um, no, because space is, all, is not the perfection. Uh, when I heard people saying, okay, we have to, to leave Earth and to, to build a new humankind on Mars, on I don't know what, in planet B, uh, a perfect world, I know, it's a very old story. Uh, new world, we have in every country, every culture, we have this idea, and we know that when we are living our culture, our life, we are bringing with us the same characteristic, the same perfection and the same failure. And the new world is a mirror, uh, quite a mirror of our world. But what I was saying is that by space, we, we can use space as a tool to, to, to make, to prefer peace to war. But it's not uh, the solution coming from outside. Uh, Aide toi le ciel t'aidera, again. One mechanical thing is that when you send a satellite into space, it is by definition crossing all the other countries. So you cannot m put, a, I mean, they're, 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 even when you go on to geostationary orbit, you, you will look at uh, many other half or ha one third of the, the Earth. So, but but uh, a satellite that is running around the Earth will cross and see uh, every other country. So as such, it is already something that you can see it either as an invasive object, or you can see it as an object sure. uh, of fraternity, of, mm -hmm. of brotherhood, because, well, you share something. And um, there's also something for, for climate, and I think Madame mentioned it. If you, uh, what is the, 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 um, the extreme and essential added value of space? It's the fact that it is the only point from where you can see the Earth our planet as a global being. Mm -hmm. It's like when you go to the doctor, you know, you, you, if, if, if you are ill, if you, are, you, you have a sickness and he can only see your toe and you show him your toe or maybe you show him a piece of your ear, it's not the same thing as if he can see you and screen you from toe to uh, your head. And uh, uh, the, the only way to make a diagnosis about what we are experiencing now with climate is from space. There is no other way. And that is uh, something that we have realized maybe some 15 years ago, but that now uh, we as uh, the, the, the experts, but, but now I think everybody can feel that consciousness that you need to have space to understand what is happening. And uh, so, um, maybe a, a, another question from, yeah, sir? Oh. Thank you. And again, thank you very much for such a fascinating evening. I have a question that may be very unpopular here because most people here are space people. Uh, and it's a question for which I want to, your thoughts as a philosopher and ethicist, not necessarily an answer because I don't believe there is an answer. So I'll start off with that caveat. Um, we were talking earlier about, uh, or you were talking earlier about um, communication, uh, you know, things like Project SETI. And so my question for an ethicist is, when we're not even sure what form the life takes or whether we're 
whether we're making a phone call to space, whether the, A, whether somebody is going to receive that call and whether we're going to understand anything or they're going to understand anything we're saying or mutually, is it ethical or what is the ethicist's position when there's so much going on on Earth that for which we need the funds? Can we put that many resources into that kind of um, endeavor? Should we put at this moment? I mean, I should also make the caveat that I'm a huge Trekkie. I'm a great fan of Star Trek and all those kinds of shows. So, you know, space is fascinating, I understand that. But there's also the here and now and what's going on on Earth. So that's my question. Yes, thank you for, for your question. Uh, you know, it, it, it's always, um, for me, belonging to the, my first consideration at the beginning of, of, of this roundtable and with the uh, reference to Obert. Um, sure that the, uh, the symbolic position of space, sky, cosmos uh, is always providing to us uh, the invitation to, to, to interrogate ourselves concerning our own uh, interpretation of the reality and myself in this reality. Uh, I use this quotation of Robert concerning the exploration. For some people, exploration has no interest. For others, there are interests. And you cannot discuss, debate. It's some different experience. Uh, the question of, of our relation with the other uh, Immediately, our relation to the other very near is, is the first question. Uh, is the other, as you mentioned in Latin, alter ego, another myself with some uh, constraints, responsibility, or I can have no interest for my alter ego, uh, my near other, because the same for the far, far, far other or the extraterrestrial world. Uh, sure that after that it's a question of resources and sort of what sort of investment we are ready to, 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 to use or not. Um, if we try only to compare amount of money, it's not probably not a good direction. I'm not a, a specialist in economical question, but when I use uh, when I, I search some amount of money concerning our human activities, it's very strange. When you compare amount of money concerning our different activities between tourism, uh, war, uh, and some other industrial activities, I'm totally lost. I cannot compare this amount of money. And after this, or oh, we are not totally after, but at this uh, pandemic, we, we discover that a, a lot of hierarchy is totally destroyed. So the question is why we decide or not to send a message and what is inside the message? How and we, mo we build moreover this? In the, the, what we call that exobiology, right? Yes. The, the research of, and when you look at the budget of a space agency and what exobiology takes, it is a peanuts, it's actually, yes. this is not what costs money, right? Uh, so sending the message is not, so sending the message is more a philosophical question than a, than a money question. But I totally agree with, we should and we do ask ourselves every day we do something if uh, we have to spend that money. And believe me, uh, the uh, kingdom of engineers it's finished. Uh, we, we are no more doing technology for technology. Everything we do has to be proven for uh, the, to be to serve something and to be useful. But, yeah. uh, but exobiology is really not what takes and in, the same, in the same time, when people are asking us as space agency, if, if you try to make a hierarchy between the question asked to us the question of extra of extraterrestrial life on UFO on uh, in the, the high level because it's it's, it's a very profound not common you know, it's sort of negative but it's a profound question from human and so after that we have to be reasonable to know what sort of uh, 
human investment, economic investment we are, we are providing to that. In CNES, we have a, a youth office. It is three, 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 four persons. But we decide, we decide quite now, uh, 45 years ago and again 20 years ago that it's a public service to answer this sort of question to our French uh, people because it's it's question from people and it's not peanuts. It, it concerns a person, it's only four person. It's, I mean, it's peanuts, some, sorry for these people, but it's, it's peanuts as, as a num amount of person, number of persons. But the interest is real. And I know, because I, I follow this, this uh, service, that they, they give a great help for some people in some time in distress, and they ask for answer. And it's the same with ET and the other. In fact, it's, it could be a very profound question for people, and we have to take time. First is taking time to answer this question. For, perhaps it's nothing concerning the amount of money. It's Take the time to, to hear this question of people concerning ET, UFO, or, or other question. And, and for me, as a member of a public organization, taking time to, to, to hear people, we are not on our uh, summit without connection with our public. First is, uh, we are working for, for a country, for humankind, trying to First, first, hearing the question, trying to provide some element of answer. A man in blue first. <coughs> okay, thank you. Uh, <coughs> since we have a, a private sponsor tonight, and <coughs> because we are in India, I am wondering uh, if uh, this country will see uh, a private uh, initiative start uh, a journey to, to space and uh, I'm asking to you uh, how confident you are uh, with this new competition reinventing uh, diplomacy between uh, countries and between peoples. Maybe I we take uh, the, the last question. Or two, the, there's one question here and one question there. We take them together. <coughs> okay, good evening, everyone. Bonsoir à tous. Uh, seems uh, like we are running out of time, so I'm going to make it quick. Um, Thank you, uh, both of you, but also everyone who made this evening possible. Uh, I am part of a generation which is more and more worried about the evening, uh, the, the future of our planet and about uh, climate change. Um, it seems like we are having a lot of uh, deep technology and deep knowledge in space uh, travel, space possibilities and space technologies. How can we use this, all this fantastic knowledge to fight against this climate change um, together. And the madam in the, on the front, on the upper row. <coughs> thank you so much. Uh, my questions, uh, uh, thank you so much for the talk. My questions related to uh, looking at outer space as a peaceful domain. Uh, how can we see this? outer space as a peaceful domain when the applications industry is uh, also looking at a competition or like a competitive advantage, as well as we also know that the applications are towards the military sector as well. So how has space ever been peaceful and can we look at it or how do we make it more peaceful? So Jacques, privatization and climate. Yes, yeah, but I suppose that uh, Mathieu has also very uh, good ideas concerning this point. Um, it's interesting to introduce this idea of competition just because we, we spoke a lot concerning cooperation due to the fact that it's France and uh, India, that's, that's clear, that it was uh, the atmosphere and the, and the spirit of, of this uh, round table this night. Uh, but we have not to forget this competition situation. And you know as me that in fact, in space, during the 60 last year in space enterprise, it was always a combination between competition and cooperation. Sometimes cooperation is more clear and in our talk or in the situation. Sometimes competition is, is, is more present and probably in the, and good example is it during the, the 10 first year. Uh, sure, that it was a competition between the United States and uh, Soviet Union, but at the same time, uh, 
they tried to introduce cooperation and cooperation arrived during the, the 70s. So uh, it, it's, it's realistic to introduce this point. It's the same concerning the public-private. Uh, private is a, is a good way uh, to introduce competition. And we have a clear illustration now with this chapter of new space, the emergence of private companies and the famous Elon Musk and what and when he arrived and how he was managed. It's, it's a very, um, yes, very clear history of the, the necessity of competition to, to go forward, to be more, not only, not only competitive, but sometimes more reasonable with a, with a way to manage the resources and, and, and to, to go in the future. So it's necessary, and I, I, I think it's a, it's, a good, it's a good opportunity to have now more um, presence of the private sector, uh, even if sometimes not easy to, f to, 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 to have a good idea of what is private by the public, because not without contact, it's not totally uh, separated. In fact, it's how, what sort of relation we have to manage in the future, or now and in the future, between what we name private, what we name public, and all the intermediate situation to establish or to prepare the future of space. And that's the reason we have to uh, not, not to forget the competition, because I just say it's important, but in the same time, to think, never forget also the cooperation. And that's the reason I mentioned, and, and we are very happy to mention this long competition between our two countries, uh, with the spirit, with the, the, the place of the influence of some person, some, okay. Because, uh, again, uh, we can build the, the next governance of space on this heritage without forgetting Cooperation without forgetting competition. And it, it's a real challenging point. Uh, but, uh, and, and the question with climate change is the same. Uh, we need the public domain, especially with climate change. Um, uh, Mathieu and me remember that uh, uh, our former president, uh, you can see the pitch, his picture in, in, the, in the exhibition, Jean-Yves Legal, always explained uh, during the ten, uh, the last, 10 last year, that 20, uh, about the 26 uh, data for the climate to, to observe, to evaluate the climate change, 20 are coming from space. And it's with this global view, uh, from a scientific point of view, it's sure that the, the position of space uh, provide global view on, on planet. It's, it's, a, it's a necessity. And we know that today, for example, in France, uh, this view, this scientific view and evaluation uh, coming from space could be in danger due of some the strategic uh, view of the uh, place of science or no place of science. And it's a real challenge for the future. And perhaps you read some papers uh, concerning that. So it, it's not a failure, but it's, it's a quite sensitive situation today. So we have to manage public-private, climate change, and your third uh, question, it was sort of common point, I, I think so. I, I, I would like to, to tell a, a little story to, to conclude and on, on these topics. Um, one satellite we have launched, a French-Indian satellite or an Indo-French satellite, which is a, it's pretty unusual to do uh, uh, you know, cooperation satellites. So we have actually a binational satellites in space. One of them is um, modelizing humidity, uh, moisture in the atmosphere. And what does it mean? It means that you can see the les nuages, the, the clouds. Sorry, you can see the clouds evoluting in uh, the evolution of the clouds in the atmosphere, it's like a movie. And uh, the interesting part of this is what did the French community do with it and what did the Indian community do with it? And I will conclude on that one, you will see why. The French community, they did a lot of climate studies about 
how our climate will evolve and how the politicians need to be informed. And this formed the basis of uh, the report of uh, GIEC, uh, GIEC, and uh, very high level political thinking. And uh, the Indian scientific community said, oh, uh, our farmers are committing suicide because uh, they lose their uh, production, the, 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 their crop, uh, due to heavy monsoon rains. Uh, at that time, in, uh, you know, in, in one night, you, heavy rains could ruin the production for a farmer for one year. And then he, he had no other chance to, to, for, for his living. And so the Indian scientists said, we will use these models of uh, clouds in the atmosphere to predict monsoons at better accuracy and be able to announce to our farmers five days in advance when the heavy rains will come so that they will not have to commit suicide anymore. And with this system, we, f first of all, the uh, level of uh, suicide of farmers in India went down due to one satellite. And second, the production of crop in India went up of 30% due to one satellite. So I, I like to tell this story because it shows how the Indian mind works and how the French mind works. And maybe the good thing is that if you put both together, you can do something interesting with it. But the Indian mind will work in a very pragmatic way to answer very concrete and day-to-day -day related questions. And uh, it is no other um, better moment than now, you know, where, where this, as you said, the climate uh, uh, problem is so accurate and where we are at risk for our very survival to have this kind of spirit and of state of mind. And I said, I'm, I'm, it's, it's my 10 years here. I think the best thing I will have to bring back, and we have to bring back people who know India, we have to export this kind of state of mind and to import it into the West, because that is something that is extremely important. And you guys who are here as students, you need to take this back home. That was it for tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacques Arnoux. Thank you.